Hello and welcome to episode 36 of Creative Walks. I am Pedro Bonato and today I wanted to talk about learning as an artist and learning art in general. And I'm recording this episode sort of like from a selfish <laughs> and time management perspective because every year around this time of the year I get messages from friends, uh, especially in Canada and Brazil, that are considering doing a master's degree in art. And then they learn that, they remember that I actually did a graduate program in art, media and design back in 2000, between 2010 and 2012. And sometimes they forget how terrible that was for me, but then they always ask, like especially if they are like in their mid-career uh, like crisis and they want to start new things or trying to learn new skills and mistake number one that they make is decide hmm, maybe I should go to graduate school so I wanted to put on the record my thoughts on learning arts and I'm going to use examples from photography from drumming from learning video which are three of the things that I've learned uh, on the last let's say decade and I feel I can say a little bit about that because uh, they're sort of like my career my path my interests so here it goes there will be a lot of subtleties uh, on what I'm saying so you may want to re-listen to this and the first thing that I that, I, that I'll mention is that I'm thinking of this for three people that have asked me about going to graduate school to do to continue their studies in art or if they are designers and they want to do some sort of art practice and this is again my opinion this is not written in stone if you disagree that's totally fine but that's been, has been my experience in three different areas and this is how I feel about it so the first thing you have to acknowledge is that people have totally different styles of learning some people like to have structure some people like to have projects some people like to learn in the chaos and sometimes you have a combination of all of those depending on the skill that you're trying to acquire that's a very important thing if you're thinking of um, engineering or physics or like whatever other thing that sort of requires uh, formal education not only from the standpoint of certification like you actually have to have a degree to be able to be a doctor is that certain things they have actually been codified in a very very good way of how to learn those things I don't think that's the case for art even because the very nature of art is about destroying boundaries I even remember seeing that some of the mo most uh, impressive uh, predictive I should say indicators for if you're going to be in school is your conscientiousness in the big five uh, personality trait and your IQ and creativity was actually which is the a trait openness in, in psychology is actually deterrent because there is no way to test those things properly so if you are a very creative person when you're put into a school system you are actually not being rewarded for that creativity that's why you have so many people that like flunk out of school and they, they become these big shots and different things and the very few people that i know of that are amazing actually came out of school or if they came out of school they don't say that it is because of school but it is in spite of school this is my bias this is my experience so here are my suggestions for people that want to start learning uh, skills in art so let me just start by saying that I think it's very different when you're learning physically based skills for example drumming when you're learning it is very very different than learning photography from a mechanical point of view because as in drumming and I believe in dance or martial arts or anything that it's good to learn certain physical traits or like a let's say quote-unquote proper way to do a specific technique the way that you start learning it will influence how you do it through the rest of your life can you change it yes of course you can but the way you start will dictate a lot of what you do so 
in the case of physical activities, I would recommend that you actually have some sort of like a more formal training in the beginning. And I know that there is a lot of ways of learning things online, and I certainly am a big advocate of it. But I think when you have your first encounter, you can have, of course, an online component, and you're going to talk about it. But having someone to actually show you, and at least even if you're having like a distant learning situation where the person can sort of like show you, for example, in drumming, the hand positions, or like certain things that you're doing that you're not even aware that that will be a problem in the future, I think it's very important that you can actually have a more formal learning style for that. With that said, with most other things that you're going to learn in art, be it drawing or even photography or video or whatever else you're trying to, to figure out, the best way to do it, in my opinion, is a combination of online resources, even for you to get started. There's a lot of things you don't need to pay $200 for a teacher to go and tell you the basics when in an afternoon you can go on a course, let's say on a Udemy or whichever other platform you're trying to find and you can get the basics. Same thing goes to any kind of software you need to master in order to advance that skill. You can find online resources that will take you step by step. Sometimes they're free, sometimes they're paid. We're going to talk a little bit later about resources, but those things, it's all about the experimentation. And it's not like you're going to have an accent or a tick when you're a photographer. You can go, you take a photograph, you see if it worked. If it didn't work, you will slowly learn through it. So that's the first thing, like uh, check to see which kind of activity you're thinking of starting. And then um, the first thing is get your online courses. And if you can, get a one-on-one -on -one or a group class to get it started. The main advantage of traditional learning and of um, a formal learning setting is not even the information that will give, be given to you because they cannot compete with the best people in the world teaching, which is what we have online. It is the community and the structure of learning. So that's a problem, let's say, on you more than on the platform itself. That's what you're buying when you're getting into formal education. Access to people and uh, a structured learning. And about that, some people consider, for example, graduate school as a way to go to have a community of artists and things like that. It is certainly true some of my best friends are still from that era and it can open some doors for you for sure. But I think it's a very inefficient way of doing it and it will screw up your brain in other ways that which we'll talk about later and I have my little rant about graduate school. But going from online courses and that one-on-one -on -one mentoring thing that you can have, um, you can always go to specific workshops to learn different things. So that's one thing that I highly recommend doing whichever kind of uh, activity you have and that is the great key for community building and getting new skills and new ideas which is to go to a workshop where people are going to be discussing and talking about specific things that you want to learn. The other source more like on the online uh, uh, part of it that I think is very important is of course you have books, podcasts, audiobooks, specific websites forums, you have YouTube, you have all sorts of online uh, schools to learn things. But the problem is, again, you have to rely on your own uh, resilience to keep going and keep studying. And one of the things that I notice, at least with me, that happens a lot when you get these online resources is that you do not have assignments. And even if you have assignments, like in school, that you have to be dragged out to be able to do those assignments, you're not going to do it. So you, it becomes a little bit too passive. And if you are a person that needs to do things in order to learn, and I think all of us are to a certain extent that, uh, we need to have this um, input that makes you do things. To me, the best way to do that is to have a project. That's how to get into this uh, third thing that I learned was a video, like learning how to film and how to edit. In those, I, uh, like for those skills, I actually used only online resources based on my projects. I had to, re to record this video. Okay, how do I do this? How do I use the camera? How do I set it up? 
And then I go and I do it and then I see what went wrong and then I go and try to learn how to edit. I get online, see the software, see how what I can do, check specific um, videos that I really like and then I put that video inside the, the software for editing. I break it down myself and I try to figure out what that person did for the editing. So I had this experience where I had very traditional learning for drumming and then I went into doing it. For photography, I had a little bit of a... Uh, training in the beginning on a course but that was when I was like 15 and then I got back to it during my graduate uh, school and I didn't learn photography in graduate school I learned it in online resources specifically uh, creative live there's a very cool website where you can learn a lot, of, a lot of artistic things but with video it was completely uh, self-taught like I didn't have any contact with any videographer to learn how to do that. One of the big disadvantages of that is that I was learning things that I needed on a need to know basis, sort of like they're very practical. And although that can be very, very cool, you actually have to go through a lot of mistakes when you're doing that. And so sometimes those mistakes can be very embarrassing. And if you were in a more formal environment, you would have gone like through them much easier. You're going to be in theory rather than disaster in practice. But considering all the things that I want to learn now uh, and that I, thinking about this actually helps me map out the strategies, I think it must be a combination, especially like in 2020, uh, it has to be a combination of online resources, with some sort of a local accountability um, group. It could be like that you go to, uh, let's say if it's a photography club and then you guys get together and work on, on specific things. And uh, if it's like music, of course, you can learn with uh, other musicians. And the third element of it is to have a project related to that learning. I think that's the only way an artist can learn. And related to that, one thing that I'll say nice about uh, graduate school was that um, they had one class that was very interesting because it was an experimental class. And the idea is you don't have to go to graduate school to have that experience. I can give it to you right now. You can save your hundreds of thousands of dollars. But the idea is this, the, of the class. The idea was you had to do this five rapid fire experiments. That meant you like one area, you go into that area, like let's say I did, for example, 3D printing. I had no idea about doing 3D printing. I was interested in trying to do um, jewelry. And I said, okay, what can I learn as fast as I can so that in three weeks I have a sort of a prototype? And then I had to do that five times throughout the semester. That was an eye-opening experience for me because it gave me permission to go and try to learn something I had no idea about. And that actually helped take the stage fright that a lot of artists have. It's like, oh, but I'm this, but I'm not that. Oh, I'm, an, I'm a painter, but I am not a photographer. Dude, in 60 hours you can learn everything you need to know about photography. That will be like the 80% that you need to do your craft or whatever you're trying to think. Unless you're trying to become um, like Sebastian Salgado or like some big shot photographer and you want to master the art, then of course it's a lifetime. But to be proficient at that skill, you don't need to. And this idea of this class, which was have this rapid fire experiments. That was invaluable and I would um, highly, highly recommend that you take advantage of that. That's a way, in a way, it's like your artist being a scientist, you're trying to experiment with things. The second uh, level of that class was somewhat interesting as well, was that you had to do, get one area out of those five and really relate that to your main artistic practice. So, for example, let's say you are a sculptor and you picked up a film. For example, you want to do a short film or you, you did something like that. So now you have to, co to combine the two elements, right? And that can even become like um, 
multimedia kind of a thing because you're going to be having two areas talk to each other or even for example even if they're not being like woo crazy like uh, I'm going to do a sculpture about a film and the film will be a sculpture in itself and all the postmodern nonsense uh, you can have for example you're a dancer and you want to see how to incorporate dance moments in the cutting of a film so you're using two different areas and i think grounding that first experience on this new area uh, on your own practice will first be very uh, useful because you're going to be able to use it right away and second it will ground your experience in something that you know so whenever you encounter problems you would actually think hmm, how did i solve this on my main practice and the other thing that I wanted to mention is this idea that uh, whenever you start learning a new skill uh, over time, like, and I've certainly noticed this in drumming, photography, video, and other things too, it's like there is this strange dichotomy that is when you compare how far you are from whoever you're modeling yourself to, let's say that there is this amazing sculptor and you're trying to learn sculpture, and all your work you are comparing to that ideal, right? And then you don't, you think you are so far away from that ideal that it can get you discouraged. But the dichotomy is that you actually are completely oblivious, not only to how far you are for that model, because you could be much, much, much closer to it than you think. And of course, you will only find out by continuing doing it. But the interesting thing is that people don't realize is that if you look back to see how far you have come, Usually you forget all the difficult steps you went through, including even deciding to start to learn something as an adult because every single thing conspires in your life for you not to quote-unquote waste time on things that are not quote-unquote profitable or things like that. So the whole world conspires to put you against uh, the odds to actually learn something new. So you really don't see how far you have come just because you have started it. And even like if you, let's say you've done something for like six months, uh, unless it's like a really, really difficult thing, like a very difficult instrument, you will see results if you do this combination of online learning and um, uh, if you can, some sort of a one-on-one -on -one kind of a thing or a group class and a project related to it. Um, so finally, the other thing I wanted to mention was that... Um, if you want to try to find resources online to learn things, in art, it has been easier and easier and easier to find those things. And I'll recommend one resource, actually a couple, but so the first thing is if you want to try to hack uh, learning better uh, in a better way, uh, you can go and look at uh, Tim Ferriss, the author of uh, Tools of Titans and 4-Hour Workweek and all that. And if you just Google his name in learning, he, he has a lot of interesting ways to hack learning. And it's uh, quite, uh, uh, quite useful to think in, in those terms if you are of a more... Um, if you need to optimize things to justify the fact that you are doing it, right? So that's one resource to go and take a look. Then if you want to learn skills in um, art, and that can be the ones that I've done are in uh, photography, some things in video, I would recommend look, if you're looking at software, go to lynda.com, lynda with a L Y. Uh, I think they were bought by LinkedIn, but you will find it. You can even get like a free trial and go and learn whatever you need to learn for like 30 minutes. I recommend taking a look in, on YouTube. There are so many good resources there, but again, they're not curated. So you have to find some bad courses in order to find some good ones. Another one that is kind of interesting too is one called Udemy. Uh, they're, I don't know where they're based, but they have like millions of uh, people uh, working on that. I even created a couple of courses with my wife there, so I'm familiar with the platform. I think it's a very interesting way to combine the traditional learning experience, so you have classes and assignments and all those things, but distributed online. And the third place that I would recommend uh, for you to go see is like in, it, go look into your specific area if there is specific um, courses that you can take. There is one, for example, for photography, there is FLIRN and there is a, a RGG, IDU, there's like all sorts of things and I think for every area there will be some interesting ones. 
The one that I'm looking into these days that I think I'm going to purchase for the next uh, over the next couple of uh, months is one called Masterclass. I took a couple of courses with them a, a few years ago and it's interesting because they have some of the best people in areas like acting and writing. They had like New Gaiman, which is the course that I read, that I saw. Uh, New Game and teaching writing, like so, you get some of the Annie Libowitz teaching photography. So you have some of the luminaries in the in the different areas in arts, and then you can go and check out what they are teaching, right? So um, uh, again, I'm not endorsing any of these uh, companies. These are just the ones that I know about and I like. And uh, with Creative Live, you can even watch like uh, on iPhones and iPads, you can watch like one class for free per day. And they have like live classes going on all the time. So, uh, but of course, I always uh, recommend you investing on your education. And one last thing that I wanted to mention is whenever you go into learning something new, as we mentioned before, there will be the phenomenon of resistance that, uh, that you mentioned from the book, The War of Art. And sometimes you think you have to be so perfect in order to do certain things. And... Uh, that's a trap, right? So let's say, oh, I'm going to learn first and then I'm going to go do the projects or I'm going to learn first and do a school so that they teach me. No one can teach you, you have to go and learn, especially when you're an adult. So my recommendation would be to just go for it. Now, finally, just as a rant, and you can skip it if it's too long for you this, uh, this episode, but I would discourage you with all my being to go into graduate school in the arts. The only caveat is, if you're doing scientific research, or if you're doing historical research, or actual work that is not art, then you can go to art school, then you can go to graduate school, and I think it's, you can choose a nice school and you're going to be great, right? However, my experience with both an uh, MFA and an MDES, which is something that in Canada they invented, that is a Master of Design instead of a Master of Fine Arts, um, I think those things are overrated. You are not going to get the skills that you think you are going to. I haven't had any friend that went through after I advised them not to and enjoyed it. Everybody has the same experience. Unless, the only caveat is, let's say that you want to become an art teacher at a school, at a university, or something like that, or for whatever reason, if, you have, if you're required to take a graduate course for any other reason, you can, you can go and you do a master's, but given the competition that exists these days, you will have to have a PhD as well later. And please know that the people, that's again, this is my opinion, I probably will do a whole episode separate just about graduate school, but they are not doing art, they are talking about art, and they are talking about art through a very specific lens that, independently if you like it or not, that's the lens that permeates academia, especially in the arts and in design schools, which is uh, this postmodernist uh, anal analysis of, uh, of things. I remember having teachers that, for example, that were supposed to be photographers and they haven't ever gotten a digital camera, they had no idea about technique and they're basically BSing their way around art and pardon my language, but that's sort of like what I saw. In the art school, what you will learn is to talk about art with other people that are encoding things into Marxist ideology and all those things. So. I would highly recommend that you do not do this. Uh, you will spend too, way too much money and you can um, think that, oh, maybe I can teach or I'll have this great experience. It's a very insular system. It will make more bad things to your creativity than good things because they are not about actually creating new things. They are about pomposity. And there may be some very cool schools, maybe in design it's a little bit different, but all the things that I've seen in art, in universities, they were all complete snake oil, horrible things. So if you're thinking about that, uh, again, my last warning, let me know about your tears after you've done it, if you decide to actually go through with it. But 
it's not the answer if you actually want to learn something. It's really sad because I always think of uh, like Renaissance times and you have these great uh, students that would come to the uh, artists uh, like studios and um, practice and be apprentices and all those things like uh, that doesn't exist. And unfortunately, the people that and again, I'm generalizing, it's not true for everyone, but it is a great percentage of the people that are teaching in art schools. They, are, they used to be artists or they are wannabe artists. They're more like critics of art rather than artists themselves. So that is my little rant about learning. I hope this was useful to you. I highly, highly recommend that you actually go and follow your curiosity, open those portals and go learn something uh, different. But try to find this combination of online and presential learning and uh, project-based learning and try to find the best combination for you and go learn something new and create something beautiful. So I'll see you tomorrow.